Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the Geometry Nodes. There's a pretty cool feature that's now available in Geometry Node, which will definitely change the way you get to work with it and also how you get to work with objects, especially 3D primitive objects right now in Blender. Now, this is actually something that we talked about last week where we said that the folks at Blender Foundation are looking at ways to actually implement this feature, which you're going to be seeing. This is not the only feature which is available for this week, but then it is a feature which we're going to cover today and it is definitely interesting. Of course, we'll go through, talk about the things that are possible and also a couple of things which I would like to see in an upcoming update, which is uh, something that will definitely help and make Make the geometry node work way better than it is right now so before we actually get into it i would like to explain something to you guys so if you hold down shift and right click right here you notice you have your 3d cursor around there so if i hit shift and a as well and go over to where we have cylinder and you'd notice that we have the cylinder there and we also have the operator so with this operator, we can increase the vertex count, we can play with the radius, and we can also play with the depth. Now, if we click on this button, we can also switch from end gone to triangle fan and also switch to nothing. But it's actually something that makes a lot of sense for most people that simply doesn't make a lot of sense in, you know, in the long run. And what this is, is once you're done working with this operator and you click out, and let's say you select this object and subdivide this by two, you would notice that we've automatically lost the previous operator. And this is something that the geometry node is fixing right now. So what do I mean? If we simply select this object by default, and then we switch our editor type to geometry node right here and click on the new button, you would notice that once we hit shift and A, within the mesh section that the folks at Blender Foundation have now added new primitive objects right here. So you can now add primitive objects within the geometry node. So this makes so much sense because if we simply use the cylinder, for example, and we click right here and connect this cylinder over to the geometry, we can now have access to all of this. So at any point in time, you know, you add a subdivision, let's go ahead and throw in that subdivision like so, click right here, we can play with the subdivision count and then we can also play with the vertex count depending on what we want to get. So this now makes so much sense because you're no longer losing this operator. So from the fill type, we can change this to none. So we still have what we have. And we can also set this to triangles. And most of you guys will be saying, okay, so what happens to the previous cube that we have there? Okay, that's not lost because if we throw in a transform by default and connect this transform right over here, let's connect this one from here, drag this down and you know connect this right over here you'd notice we now have this as well. So you want to see the both of them, a very Houdini styled right now. You can connect these two together and you'll be able to see them both. So at this point, you probably will be saying, okay, so where the hell is that? And it is right here because once we throw in that transform as well, we can connect these two and use the transform tools to actually move them apart. So for those who are also thinking about, okay, with this, what can you create? Of course, there's a couple of cool things you can make with this. First of all, you can now scatter geometry across several things, which makes so much sense. And then for those who have been thinking and wondering how they can create volumes with multiple objects within the geometry node, all right, your dreams are right here. They've come true for you because now you can get a point distribute. So we get the PD and get the point distribute right there, connect this, and we can increase the number of points that we want. So you can play with the density, get some good results with that. And then you can convert your points to volume. So with this now, you now have your volume. And from here, we can now merge several things together or simply convert the volume back to mesh. Okay, so volume to mesh. And now we can start creating some pretty cool stuff. So for those guys or for you guys that might be wondering, can you also do some more crazy things with this? Yeah, of course you can. So we can also go in, connect this one right here and connect this right over here. And you kind of think like, okay, it's the same. No, it's not the same because if we click over here and put a minus sign and press the enter key, we can now start making some cool and uh, crazy things. Now, regardless of this, there's also something I'm willing to see or something I wish to see. And it is the fact that once you're working with this, if it's gonna be possible to work with, you know, uh, several kinds of modifiers. Now, it's very interesting to see that we're getting some more modifiers that are coming in here. Of course, we did see the subdivision surface, the triangulate, and also the subdivide, but it will be nice to see some more 
uh, modifiers, maybe the wire modifier and so on, come over to this. There's also something else I did notice. I noticed that if you come over to, you know, if you open your blender for the first time and you don't have a geometry here, you cannot initiate the geometry node. All right, so I think maybe this might be a cool fix. Of course, right now you notice this isn't selected within the viewport. If I click out and click on new, it's available, but that is just, um, I wouldn't say it's a trick, but this is what actually happens. Right here, it is still selected, okay? So if I turn this off, or let's say I switch over to something else, or maybe I just simply don't select anything, or let's simply select this and delete, you notice we don't have that here. So I would really love to see where you can initiate a geometry without having a geometry within your viewport because that becomes the center of what you'll be making and i do understand the fact that this is the early stage of you know the geometry node but for future updates i would love to see where you can create things by simply hitting new and creating whatever you want without having a single geometry within your viewport another thing which i would also love to see is this that i did also try out this one so let's grab the icosphere for example all right so let's go back with a cone all right the cone looks good and um, with this here, if I go in and do a simple join and connect the first one and throw in a transform and then connect this transform with this other one and then connect this one with this other one. All right. And let's move this over to the top, for example. So I'm just going to move this over to the top. And with this here, of course, you can go in and put your point distribute and let's throw in that point distribute right there. Increase this and let's try out that point instancing so if we plug this point instance in here i don't know if this is just me but i did notice that when we pick up a geometry and connect it to the object it is not visible i would love to see where we can actually wire these things in since we're working within geometry node and not only be able to select it from here because even from here if i go in and select the simple cube it's still not there it doesn't see the cube as an object that exists or as an instanced object right here it simply sees it as one whole object that you work with from here and i think if it's going to be possible for us to be able to generate things from the geometry node i guess that might be very useful and of course there's a couple of updates that's available within the geometry node so just in case you missed this last week uh, yeah, there's a couple of cool things. So let's say we select this and press M on the keyboard to mute that. We did say that at any point in time you apply geometry, you know, you apply the geometry nodes to an object, automatically you can now hit the apply button right here. So the modifier is now applicable to anything. So at any point in time you click on apply, you now have a whole object. Of course, I do understand this idea because now I know a lot of you guys will be in the comment section saying, yeah, I mean, this is the main reason why it was created. But then it would also be nice if we can get a button that could convert this to become an object. Okay, so you can now convert it to become an object that exists here by simply starting out from this part. You know, I'm just thinking of a two way street where it's going to be very useful for people to actually create things without using anything as their base, but simply using pure nodes to make this thing work. Okay, so with this said as well, for those who didn't see this one within last week's update, there is a, a pretty cool geometry spreadsheet. And now the geometry spreadsheet is even getting better. Because the last time we talked about this, I guess what we could only see was the original, but now you can see final and original. So if you go over to final, you can see the final position of the point, which is within the X, Y, and Z. And if you switch these to polygon, you could also see you know, the final position of all of these things. Now, if you want to see the original position, if you select and go over to original, you see the original position of these objects before they began to get distorted. And then if we go over to final, you can also see what they look like. And of course, we did mention that within the mesh, you can also see point, edge, corner and polygon. And yes, there is also the point cloud. So just in case you have point cloud, you want to be able to see these things. It's also going to be useful. Now, uh, according to what I said last week, I'm still sticking to that, that it will be nice if we can also be able to have those modifiers or the modifiers that exist here also work with this point. So let's say we have a triangulate modifier. It would be nice to see the triangulate modifier, you know, being able to read the data from here. So let's say if we go over to points or let's say we go over to polygon, 
you know, being able to read the polygon numbers and use that number to manipulate what we have here. And yes, I do know that there is the vertex group system. So if we can get this vertex group system as something that will be able to work with the modifiers and probably work around here as well, I guess these are very cool things that we would love to see. And uh, yeah, that might also make a lot of sense. So for those who are thinking about working with the geometry node, these are the cool updates that's available for the geometry node. And yes, there are tons and tons of updates within this week that you guys will be able to catch up with with the weekly update that will be coming out soon that deals with Blender 2.93. And for those who do have a keen eye for the UI, you might have also noticed that the Blender 2.93, the current version which I'm using right now, has a very tiny UI update. So just in case, you know, just in case you have an eye for these things, you would notice that right here that there is a brand new collection property. And within the collection property, there's a couple of cool things happening there. And we will actually go ahead and talk about these things within the weekly updates. And for sure, there is a brand new line art update as well and a grease pencil update so simply stick around to take a look at these tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace